Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. Our story that we chose is called The Robber Bridegroom. It's 1822, and there's a village. And in this village, they have a lot of milling to do. (laughs) So the primary occupation in this village uh, is Miller. This Miller has a daughter, and he decides that she's grown up, and she needs to settle down. And he wants somebody rich, somebody that meets his standards to marry his daughter. So he wants to do that. And there's a a guy that comes by that looks like he's wealthy, I guess, Mm -hmm. which it doesn't matter his character. Who cares? If he's got money, I can marry into wealth. He hadn't heard anything bad about him, so... Like, she wanted her to be in good hands. A guy comes in, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty awesome. I'll marry your daughter. The daughter gets creeped out by this guy, and she doesn't quite like him. But, you know, he's she's going to marry him anyway. Um, and, and then one day, he's like, you don't ever come visit me. You never visit me. We're about to get married, and you, I don't, you've never seen my place. Yeah, and then she's like, I don't know where you live. You're, you're a stranger that came into town from the woods. Yeah, he lived in the woods, and then she kept trying to make up like excuses um, to for her not to go see him. Like she, um, she didn't know the directions, and then um, so he was like, Okay, well, I will. I'll leave a trail of ashes for you to find my house. Leaves the trail of ash from the edge of the forest to deep in the forest where he lives and she's like reluctantly like all right I guess that's there's no other options for me now I have to go he's offering to leave a trail of ashes so the next day she's kind of freaked out still she's really scared she starts following the trail of ashes but because she's a smart young lass she carries with a with her a uh, satchel of Peas and lentils. And she, uh, throughout the trip, she's dropping these peas and lentils along the side of her her path. Finally, she's, I mean, she's been walking the whole day and uh, gets to the middle of this forest. Dark out, isolated area covered in brush and trees. Yeah. And moss. Moss. She gets to this single house in the deep, 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 Woods. She got in the house. Yeah. She walks in and she doesn't see the guy. It's just dead quiet. And then all of a sudden she hears his voice. Turn back, turn back, thou bonny bride. Nor in this house of death abide. Because if you hold your life so dear, there is nothing you can Oh, are you here? So then the maiden looked up and saw that the voice came from a bird in a cage that was on the wall. So then she heard that same cry again. And the beautiful bride went from room to room all over the house. And every single room that she went into was empty. Every single room. And then at last she reached the cellar and she decided to go down into the cellar to check to see if that was empty as well. And while she was down there, she saw this old old woman. She asked her, can you tell me if my bridegroom lives here? And the old lady answered, alas, poor child, little dost thou know where thou art. Thou art in a murderer's den. Thou thoughtest thou wast about to be married, but death will be thy marriage. So she heard it from a bird, and then she heard it from an old bird. That should be enough to get the f*** out of there. Yeah, but now it's too late, and so the, the witch tells her, Well, listen... 
they're gonna eat you. They like the f human flesh. They're gonna cook you up and they're gonna eat you. But if I take pity on you, I can hide you because I want to leave as well. So I'm going to take the poor girl and hide her behind a barrel. And then the robbers came. And they had a, another maiden with them. They get her drunk. They give her three oh, yeah. glasses of wine, um, a red and a white and a yellow. And then when she drank the yellow, she died. They just chopped her up in pieces. And then one of the guys wanted the ring that was on her finger. And so he was trying to get it off, but it, it wouldn't come off. So then he cut off her finger to get it off the other end of the finger. Yeah. He went to cut the finger off the hand and it flew back and it landed in the maiden's lap and the guy's looking for it, can't find it. And so the other guy that was, was with him was like, well, did you look behind the cask? And he was like, oh no, I, I didn't, I'll look there now. Then the old lady was like, oh no, no, you can get that tomorrow. The finger's not gonna go anywhere. And then he agreed and he was like, yeah. I guess you're right, it'll be there tomorrow. Okay. So then they went and they ate food and stuff. And the, the old lady started uh, cooking cooking the maiden. But the old lady, she roofied the guys, and they were able to escape. The girl, the, the live bride, and the old lady. But I don't think the bird got out, unfortunately. The old lady went somewhere else, maybe to another story. <laughs> we'll find her in another story. Um so the girl gets to her dad and... He runs outside and she sees the trail that she left of the peas and the lentils because the wind blew the ash away. The peas and the lentils actually took root and sprouted yeah. in three hours, six hours. We'll say ten hours. They led her back out of the forest and she went and she saw her dad and, and she told him what's up. Told him what happened and then he was like... I have an idea. Mm -hmm. We're still going to have the wedding. Tomorrow you're going to get them. You're going to get that guy. You're getting him good. Anyway, so they have the wedding the next day. Telling stories around the table. Gets to her. She's like, I don't have any stories, but I do have a, a dream that I had last mm -hmm. night that was pretty incredible. And she tells the story about what we just said. She gets to the, the crow first and is, and tells the, turn away, turn away. This is not a good place for you because this is the house of a murderer. And, uh, and then she's like, but it was only a dream. And then gets up to the point where the old lady hides behind the cask. Mm -hmm. And she's like, but it, it was only a dream. This, this is only a dream, honey. Don't worry. You stay put. I'm just telling you what my dream was. And well then he gets to the point where where he cuts off the or chops up the girl. He was probably getting ready to book it and she was like and then he cut off a ring finger and it flew in the air and then it landed in my lap and this is the ring get him. And then everybody <laughs> climbs over and they're like this guy needs to go down. The gas got up and grabbed him and him and his gang were all executed. And the girl ended up with all the money. That that was it. The end of that story. Someone lived happily ever after, and a lot of people didn't. Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.